Hey guys, Kev here, and I am ready to do my full review on the Sencut Scepter. This knife here was loaned to me by Big Red EDC himself, JB Jody. Uh, he's just a great dude in this community. I'm sure you all know of him. Uh, he does a lot of charity stuff, and I did a channel chat with him recently. If you haven't seen that, Go check it out on his channel. I basically drank beers and chatted with him for uh, an hour and a half or so. I had a good time. And we ended up trading some knives back and forth. Or loaning, sorry. Some knives back and forth. And uh, I've had his for <laughs> a little too long. So I want to get these back to him. Um, again, this is the Sencut Scepter, which is a new company. Um, it is of the We Corporation conglomerate, whatever. Uh, you basically now have Wii, Civivi, and then Sencut being the budget. Civivi has moved up to the $70, $80 range and started using S35VN, um, which I don't know how I feel about that, guys. I I honestly don't think it was the best move. Uh, I really thought it was cool that Civivi was doing, um, you know, $50 to $60 knives and the... the uh, 9CR 18 MOV, which is on here, was very acceptable steel, good steel. Uh, they used way too much D2, but some people love that, so to each their own. But I'm definitely, you know, I'm not going to be picking up many Civivis now because I used to just be like, oh, that's a cool design. Uh, let me just grab it because it's 50 bucks or whatever. And it never was a big deal. But once you get to like 80 bucks, you know, now I'm thinking like, is it a keeper? Do I really care about the design? It's not just a check it out thing anymore. Um, you know, you can't just give it away or whatever. You can, but you know, the price range is different. And I don't see that big of a, I mean, 9CR18 is really good, guys. I love this steel. Now I don't abuse my knives, so maybe that's why I don't notice a huge difference between it and like s35vn i know that's an objectively better steel but to me they they both perform well uh maybe you get a little longer edge on the s35 but to save 30 bucks or whatever i don't know and i, I know people have this kind of issue with 9cr because it sounds like 8cr right 13 mov which Again, is a very budget steel that only a few companies now use, like CRKT and uh, Kershaw. Um, it's pretty much been replaced by D2 um, in the budget realm. And, and I never even had that big of a problem with that blade steel. The only knife I've ever had with HCR, or kept anyway, is the uh, Kershaw Atmos here. And I absolutely uh, love this knife. It's just such a good uh, budget $30 knife here. Um, performs really well. But yeah, the edge retention is not that great. Uh, this is actually a knife I have I have um, sharpened multiple times. There are a few knives I've actually sharpened before I got it crazy into collecting and just don't use them. I don't use a single knife enough to really wear it out. Um, but... You know, this knife, my bug out, uh, my uh, 450 CF from ZT that I had, I traded that. Um, those I have sharpened before. And this takes an edge pretty quick on the uh, Sharp Maker from a Spider Co. No issue there. Um, and it drops up really good. So HCR is not bad. I haven't carried this in a while, but for 30 bucks, right? It, that's fine. So if you're talking. You know, people compare this to that, the 9CR, and it's not. It's not the same. I would put 9CR closer to, like, N690 and VG10. I don't think it's quite there in terms of edge retention, but uh, it's stainless. It's pretty tough. Like, it's, it's a good budget steel, guys. Uh, you know what? Maybe, like, uh, 12C27N or 14C28N. Those would be comparable, I think, to 9CR. So, um yeah, don't be afraid of it because of the name, you know. Um, by the way, got my LaCroix here, coconut flavor. If LaCroix wants to hit me up and sponsor the channel, uh, I would be very welcome to that. Just send me cases of it and I'll drink it on the channel. Uh, you know, that would work. I doubt that'll happen, though. So, we're talking about 
the Sin Cut Scepter here, guys. Sorry I got off track there. Um, this is a very interesting knife to me. This is the only one of the Sin Cut knives that came out. I think they had the Actium and some other name that I can't remember that looked just like another design they already did. Basically, I think one of them looked like the uh, Fracture and one of them looked like the Brigand or... I don't know, one of those other ones that they did, you know, early on. This one is original looking, you know? And the reason I liked it, if you saw my unboxing of this, basically I did an unboxing of Big Red's Knives. So look for that video if you're interested. I don't know if I put the name of the knife, excuse me, I don't know if I put the name of the knife in the title. But when I unbox this, my immediate like reaction, and that's what you get with my unboxings, negative or positive or mediocre is a reaction, right? Uh, my immediate reaction to this was, wow, I really like this. Uh, I'm going to get one after this video, right? And I actually did. I ordered one on Amazon right after the video. Uh, Send Cut is only sold on Amazon. So if you don't like Amazon or Chinese knives, this is the perfect knife for you. <laughs> Uh, no, this is not the perfect knife if you are against big corporations and against Chinese knives. Uh, you might as well just stop watching, right? Um, but I got one on Amazon right after, and it came two days later. And wow, guys, I didn't unbox it because I already had one on the channel to show you. And I'm glad I didn't because it was god-awful. I mean... I got the same exact spec, right? Like the this gray micarta, right? And it was like dark brown. It, was, it wasn't even gray, really. It was almost brown, but I mean, you could tell it was supposed to be the same color. It wasn't like I got a brown one instead of a gray one. Um, it was just a different color and not because Big Red has got his oils in here or whatever. It just was off. Um, the detent was much stronger on the one I got, which... You guys know, usually I don't like it when a uh, knife doesn't deploy all the way when it gets to the break. Like right here is the detent test. See how it doesn't break all the way or deploy all the way? You have to, you know, give it a little bit on the light switch or the push button. Um, normally I don't like that. And the one I got was a lot stiffer. So when you deployed it, yeah, it locked up. But it was so stiff and with this tiny, tiny flipper tab. I mean, look how small this is, guys. Like, it's just not that big. And having a stiff detent, it was like, oh, it was really painful. And then the other reason I don't mind it being a little uh, lighter on this knife is because they added thumb studs. So I can easily thumb flick this. And if I do the test on the thumb stud, go to the brake. It always fires out. So I think they dialed this D10 as well as they could. You can uh, spidey flick it. Like, this is fun to play with, guys. Um, so I was okay with the D10 on this. And then I got that one, and it was, like, super stiff. And even the thumb studs, like, hurt a little bit to deploy. Um, so, I mean, with that, and then it also had major lock stick. Like, the lock bar was so much harder to to get out of the way and with this jimping right here that you'll see um it hurt a lot to get that out of there and i ended up just returning it and you know what guys i'm glad i did i got my 45 bucks back this was 45 bucks shipped um i don't need this knife like this is a small knife and yeah i like small knives like check this out this is uh one of my newest acquisitions this is the richard rogers oem slut now we're completely slim utility aka slut we're completely on a different level here right guys this is a you know call it a 250 dollars knife new that goes for 450 500 on the secondary um but i like smaller knives it's not that this is too small or anything it's just that you know when i get these kind of budgety knives now they're cool if they're if they're really good like i like them i play with them for a day and then they go into the um the case or a drawer or something and they almost never come out like i and then eventually i package them all up and i sell them or i just give them away like i'll put them into knife packages for people uh for free like whatever so i you know i'm kind of glad that i just returned it because 
for me personally and my current preferences, I wouldn't have ever carried this. It would have just sat around and the one I had was a lemon anyway. So that being said, so I want to mention that because there's definitely some kind of variance in the QC. And now we all know that if there's a lemon in the bunch, I'm going to get it. So it could have just been that, but I want to warn you, okay? Now, if I'm looking at this example, right? This is a cool knife. This is a good knife. This micarta feels really good for $42. This feels really good. I like the gray color. I mean, it stands out a little bit. I don't, you know, as opposed to like green or brown or whatever, it's just different. Um, I like that it has multiple deployment methods. So, I mean, I might as well just start from the top aesthetically, right? At first, I thought this was an ugly little knife. And I wasn't really into it at all. But now that I have it in hand, it's actually a pretty cool looking knife. You got a nice little, I'll call it a drop pointy blade, right? Um, you have a good edge on here. You have a nice tip. Like this is a good knife for just basic EDC. Uh, you have the thumb studs there. And then you have uh, this deep carry clip that goes past the butt end of the knife. So that's a win right there. Now this this is reversible, but I want to mention that when you go ahead and reverse it, this knife is constructed of T8s and T6s, which is a thing now. Uh, it's been a thing for a long time, and I don't understand why companies don't just go to T8s. Just go to T8s. Um, but anyway, you have to take this T8 out on this side for this barrel spacer. Then you take these two T6s out, and that actually loosens this barrel spacer, right? So it can shift around, so you have to be careful. Now, when I did it, it just stayed in place, but I've heard of people saying that barrel spacer just fell out or whatever. So then you just take, uh, once it's all out, you take this T8, flop it to the other side, put it in um, on the top hole where the barrel spacer is, and then you put the clip over and you put the two T6s through. One's longer and one's shorter. Um, and that's pretty much it. Then you have a reverse clip. It functions fine. Um, it's It's got countersunk screws, right? But the clip, the uh, base there, the ramp, whatever you call that thing, is not sunk into the scale. Uh, but I didn't notice any issues with that. It went in and out of pocket really well. It's a good clip. Um, in case you're wondering, this clip actually fits onto the Wii Banter here. Um, I actually, I don't know if, if you guys saw my video or my Instagram, I bent this clip to no end. Um, I, I've ordered another one from Wii, which by the way, that costs five bucks. They'll ship it to you, you pay for shipping. Um, but this uh, scepter clip actually fits into that slot and it worked. Um, but you know, I went ahead and returned that other scepter. So the clip went with it. Um, so yeah, that is kind of the aesthetic look. It's really cool. It has these two barrel spacers. Um, uh, it's a good look looking little knife for 40 bucks, right? Um, I think they make a G10 version. Um, that's a little bit cheaper probably. So if you're, if you're trying to save a couple more bucks, you could do that, but I would recommend this micarta one. Um, 40 bucks. This micarta is really good, guys. I mean, definitely, definitely a nice feature to have. Um, so if we want to talk about action, um, it's good. You know, like I said with the detent, it's slightly light for a flipper, but because you have the thumb studs, it's it's perfectly fine. I really like it actually. And uh, unless you're trying to fail the knife, you don't, you know. Uh, so action is good. The thumb studs are really good. You can middle finger flick, all the good stuff. There's some jimping here on this flipper tab, which really helps out. If that wasn't there, you would constantly slip off. Um, kind of reminds me of a Ferrum Forge Gent. Um, imagine this tab being just a slight bit longer and not having any jimping. And that's what the Gent has, which it can, it can be frustrating. Uh, oh, I have one. What am I doing? I sent my other one to Kyle, but so if you check these out, right, they're very, very similar. There's just no jimping on this one. So you have a tendency to slip off sometimes. This one has a really weak detent, so it doesn't happen as much. My other one's stiffer. Um, 
and sometimes you'll kind of flop off of it and that can hurt a little bit on your uh on your finger there um, but this one has good jimping on it and uh you rarely slip off of that so action good on this on this example keep that in mind the one i had or that I ordered had a stiffer detent, which some people like, some people won't. But, you know, I really hate it when it's like a guessing game. That's why I love Riot so much. Um, it's always the same. Everything's the same. Detent is always nailed in. Fit and finish is always dialed in. Centering, always dialed in. It's just, it makes your buying experience so much better because you can order a knife and not worry what's going to show up, you know? Uh... So we talked about action carry, again, deep carry clip, really good, goes in and out of pocket, perfectly fine. Classic Civivi type, you know, Wii clip, whatever, it works great. Um, what else? So we talked about aesthetics, we talked about action, uh, ergos. So ergos, on this knife, it's a little small, guys, but for being a smaller knife, I can just fit four fingers on, right? And I have a large 2XL size hand, uh, which is destroyed right now from the cold. It it dropped under 30 here the last two days, and, man, I've been bleeding. Uh, but, yeah, so I can just fit four, and it's comfortable enough to hold like this. There's no jimping on the blade, so uh, but it's fine because you're locked in with that micarta. It's good. And then you have this, uh, I'll call it a choil, it's really not meant to be one, but you can choke up on it and use it like a choil. Um, I don't get to the edge there. I have pretty thick fingers, uh, but it doesn't quite get to the edge and become an issue. Um, so somebody with more slender fingers could definitely use this as a choil uh, all day without worrying. Um, so ergos, they're actually pretty solid. Um, lock bar access on this guy is pretty good. They have these uh, kind of they have a little bit of jimping on the lock bar so you can get in there and, and push it with your thumb. Um, I do wish it was cut out a little bit more, but I pretty much say that with every liner lock. So um, that could just be a me thing. Left-handed, this knife is easier to operate left-handed. I find that liner locks are easier left-handed because you just come in from a better angle and you just go right at the lock bar, push it, and get it out of the way, right? Um, whereas right-handed, you kind of got to like slide the corner of your finger in. And if it's too stiff, it can be a pain, you know? Um, this knife does not drop shut or anything. But it's smooth and it's pretty uh, shake shutty. You know, one of these will get it done. Uh, for a $40 knife... You know, you're not expecting drop shut, really. This is good. Um, it's definitely a fidgety knife. And, um, again, the, the closing action is pretty good. Um, so I think that leaves us with value and recommendations, right? So value, $42, guys. Uh, you know, if it didn't have the micarta, I would actually be saying, eh, it's a little steep, right? Because... I know it's not cheap or not expensive, $42, but we were talking about Civivis at 50 bucks, and I don't know. I, I just think those were finished a little better. Um, I think your value proposition was a little bit better on a Civivi, to be 100% honest. You got a zipper pouch with a cloth, which was always nice to have. You got stickers and stuff with Sencut. You get a brown square box, and that's it. I don't even know if it was in a baggie or anything, but you don't get a cloth or pouch or anything like that. Um, the fit and finish is good, but it's clearly not... It's not Civivi level, and the QC obviously isn't Civivi level either, because I haven't really had any issues with Civivis. And the first scent cut that I personally bought, I had issues with right out of the bat. The micarta was wrong. Um, the lock bar was too stiff. Uh, the detent was too stiff. Like, it just was off. And um, so, value-wise, I just don't know if it's there at $42. Now, what I heard was these were going to be 30, 30 bucks, basically, scent cuts. So, if you can get this in G10 for 30 bucks, yeah. That's a great value. That's a good value.
But at 42, I might just bump it up 10 bucks and go get something else. You know, get a CJRB Rhea, like one of the cool ones um, that Knife Center has. I think they're like 50 bucks with like a titanium clip or something. Um, and they're similar in the sense of the form factor and the thumb stud. Um, it just doesn't have the flipper, right, on the Rhea. So I would compare this to the Rhea. And I haven't had one of those in hand, but I've heard so many good things that I could probably recommend that knife. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at with value, guys. Um, the micarta does kind of give it a little bit extra. So I mean, if you have 42 bucks to spend on this and you really like the design and like the the dual uh, opening methods and everything, I would try it. And again, you're getting it from Amazon. So if what happens to me happens to you, you can just return it easy peasy. Uh, but don't don't lie. I hate when people return stuff and say it's damaged when it's not or whatever. Because depending on what you choose as your return option, they may recycle that that product into the the uh, consumer base, uh, or they might just throw it away. So just be honest when you return stuff. Amazon's a great company. Their customer service is top notch. They're going to take care of you. So that's a whole other story. But um, recommendation, yeah. I mean, if you're lefty and you want a cool budget knife with a reversible clip, this is a good one, guys. I mean, it's definitely a good one. Uh, if you're right-handed, same goes for you. Uh, you have more options. But, um, you know, in this, in this range, usually you get a reversible clip anyway. So I can recommend this knife as long as you get a good one, you know? Um, so that's the little caveat to the recommendation there, guys. Those are my thoughts on the Sencut Scepter. I'm gonna go ahead and get this back to Jody. He's a great dude. I, I really hope to chat with him more in the future and get to know him a little bit more. Um, you know, we've done a lot of surf uh, surface level uh, communicating and stuff, but he just seems like a really cool, down to earth dude, my kind of dude. and. Um, so I hope to get to know him a little bit, and uh, I really do enjoy uh, loaning out and getting loaners in from other channels and just people in the community. You guys are amazing. Um, I will shut up now. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I catch you later.